We're starting from the BDP sample that we built in the previous blog, and we set a breakpoint here for the save button just to show you what we get in the list of changed records. Okay, as you can see, we have the records, we have something called the operation, which indicates what type of operation was done on a record. And um, so this is under um, item, there's a, something called operation, and then there's item metadata, which has something called the key, which is the key of the record. And we're going to use those two things when we are now going to add an ability to remove a record from our table. So to do that, we're going to start by dragging an icon over. You can also use a button if you prefer. And we're going to assign a nice trash icon to this icon. And then we're going to define what happens when you click on this icon. What we want to do is we want to remove a record from our table. So the table is based on our buffering data provider, our BDP. And we're going to do a remove operation on that BDP using the variables that this action gets. So we're using a call variable action. We're pointing to the BDP and we're picking up the remove item operation or method on that. Then we need to pass in the metadata key information. Okay, so basically we don't have data that we need to pass here, but we need to pass which record we want to remove. So uh, there's a key property and we're passing in the key value. Now the key, as you can see, is something we're getting as an input parameter to this section. Okay. So if we we'll now uh, run this, this would work. We want to do one more thing, which is to enable the save button once we remove a record. So you'll be able to click save. So this is this assign variable that we're doing here. So now if we go back to our page, switch to live mode, and we click on a record, this would remove the record and the save button is now enabled. All right, so the next thing is we need to handle the actual deletion in the save button. So in the save button, we have this for each that right now just goes over and does update. We need some time to do update and some time to do remove. So we're adding an if statement. We're taking into one branch of the if this operation of update and into the else. We're going to use a call rest and in here, we're going to use the delete method on our employee. We need to pass in the ID of the employee we want to remove. So again, this is something that we get inside the item. And so the way to do this is you can basically go over here and just um, type item dot item dot metadata and dot key. Now make sure that this is an expression that is uh, like that without any surrounding quotes or something like that. And that's what we pass in to this. And um, for the if, we need to have, a, again, a condition here instead of two. I'll show you this in the code editor. Uh, we can basically go into the eight item dot operation and check whether it's an update. So if it's an update, we're going to do the first operation, which is calling the rest endpoint for doing an update. And if it's a, not an update, we're assuming it's a delete, we're going to call the delete method. Um, you can, of course, add another condition for insert situation if you want to. All right, let's do a refresh of our application. The save button is disabled right now. So what we might want to do is actually update one of the records to get um, that save button to be enabled. We also are missing right now the actual method for this button because it hasn't downloaded yet. If we click save, it downloads and we have a breakpoint here and we can inspect what we have in our uh, breakpoint if we want to. All right, so let's hit the um, delete button and we're hitting our breakpoint when we click save. And if we now look, for example, at um, uh, the operation, let's set a breakpoint on the operation here and reach this line. Operation is remove. So in the condition, it's not an update. It's going to go to the second rest call. And over here, we're going to pass in the item.item .item metadata key, which gives us the actual key of the record. And if we clear the rest um, calls and we run it, the network tab, we can see here's our rest call to the delete and it succeeded pretty nicely. So this is how you add a delete operation to your table. 
Uh, one more thing that I want to show in this video is right now, in order to edit a record, you need to double click on this record. Some people prefer to have a single click operation to edit a record. So there's a property for the table that is called edit row, which has a row key and a row index. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a little icon at the beginning of the row. And this would be an edit icon. So we'll use a little pencil icon over here from the Redwood Gallery. And when you click this icon, what we want to do is we want to set which record you're currently editing. Okay. So we're going to create a new variable of type object. Um, we're going to call it the row to edit. And it's an object. As we saw, it has two properties the row key and the row index. So we're going to assign to it a row index um, with a value coming into the section of the index of the row. And then the row key, um, like that, which is going to have the key that is being passed into this action chain. Those are, again, given to you when you select a record basically in the table when you're clicking on it. All right, so now if we um, go over to the table property into the edit row, we're going to make it so this relies on the row to edit variable. Okay, so now if we go over and we click on the pencil, we go into edit mode for that specific row with a single click, no need to do double click. Um, and again, this is basically our editable table working as expected. Uh, you can, of course, rearrange columns over here. For example, if you prefer to have uh, this icon be next to the other icon, you can just drag and drop it in the table, have one column where you have your action and the other column you don't need it anymore. Uh, easy to remove it just from here, from the properties of the table. We'll remove the last column. And we can change the title of the first column of the table now to be something like actions. Right. Let's run our little application. Okay, we got the icons. We can click to edit a row, modify values in this row. And we'll give them a salary of 5,000. And we can also remove, for example, employee number two. So Chris Norris, we just remove it. When we click save, we process the two actions from the buffer data provider and we update the database. So if we now go back into the database, I'm working on a business object here and I look at the data for employees, you'll notice that employee number two is missing and employee number four has a salary of 5,000.